Hey y'all, what's up? Happy Sunday. How y'all doing? How was your week? Listen, we finna get into the shy. This is about to be a quick recap because I have some things going on today. So, but I did want to stop by because I wanted to talk to y'all. Y'all know we talk on Sundays about this show, what we've been watching. So this is a shy episode, um, season three, episode seven. And y'all, so in this episode, y'all, if y'all knew that um, Keisha was going to be found in this episode, make sure you like this video. Say something in the comments. Make sure y'all say something when you come in here. But yes, y'all, Keisha was found by Ronnie. I knew Ronnie was going to find her, y'all. When Ronnie, after, oh, uh, and then Miss Ethel's funeral, y'all. Miss Ethel's funeral. They didn't even do it up for her funeral. She had a weak funeral. I was like, dang, I thought we'd be doing more for Miss Ethel's funeral. But Miss Ethel didn't have too much money, I guess. So I don't know. what I don't know what I expected for her funeral. But yeah, we did see Miss Ethel's funeral in the beginning of this episode. So this is like the second, third funeral that we didn't see in this season so far. But yeah, y'all, after Miss Ethel's funeral, uh, Ronnie was saying bye to his two friends who, and by this point in the uh, season, if y'all have not determined that these two dudes are gay, then um, something's wrong with y'all because they got to be gay. They always hanging together. They are gay. Everybody in this season is gay. Everybody, okay? So yeah, y'all, Ronnie, I knew that he was going to find Kisa. Keisha in this episode for sure when after his funeral he seen that mural on the wall of Jason and it reminded him um that he had to go find Keisha but yeah y'all and um did y'all notice when he asked the neighbor Ronnie asked the neighbor about um uh Amari's wife the guy that had Keisha or whatever his name is asked about his wife and he's and the lady said that he didn't have a wife here comes royalty Cause she hears me busy hold on y'all because hold on okay y'all so normally i would let baby royalty say hi but she is not dressed today so we just gonna we gonna leave her where she at but yeah y'all when the lady when the neighbor tells ronnie that omari does not have a wife i was like oh wow i knew he didn't have a wife i mentioned that in the last i think i mentioned that in my last recap or i mentioned something about his house being clean when he said it wasn't dirty but y'all remember he had told ronnie that so i'm so glad that ronnie followed his instincts and went ahead and found keisha in that basement because y'all she was about to kill herself she was like that's it when she woke up with buddy and buddy was like we had a long night that was the first time that we actually um that lena actually led on that the guy had been raping her because we kind of thought that's what was going on but we didn't really know like he was just you know doing weird stuff with her combing her hair and stuff like that and having her call him daddy so it was like we were assuming that that was going on but we kind of found out that exactly what was you know that was going on too when he said we had a long night i was like so grossed out and then it all came together at the end when her um doctor when nina and um dre and the family went up to see after keisha had been rescued they went up to see her at the hospital and they the doctor said that they were waiting on a rape kit so i was like oh wow this dude is like all the way creeped out but i'm so glad that um keisha was found in this uh episode that way this is the seven so eight nine ten about three more episodes we'll um we don't have to be watching to see if keisha is going to be found because she was found in this episode but yeah y'all so what about zeke like i cannot believe do y'all believe that he is actually gonna rent out sunny's to uh emmett and dom like did he go and talk to sunny about that like how did he decide that he was gonna rent out that place to emmett and dom after he told at rent, rent sunny's out after he told them that he wasn't gonna do it so i'm kind of like surprised like bro what i did not expect that at all like at all but i did suspect that emmy was gonna sleep with dom and that's exactly what happened i already knew that they was gonna have sex sooner or later in the season it was a weak sex scene like lala is not she's a mediocre actor at best like and nothing against her i love lala but that the acting there was just like girl uh like you know what i'm saying so speaking of sex scenes y'all in this episode, when we finally found out why Roslyn is having some problems in her marriage with Duda is because she has some infidelity. So they didn't make Roslyn gay. Roslyn told me I slept with your secretary and I said sorry. 
<laughs> and she said it in a matter of fact way like maybe dude i had been cheating on her before or something like that but y'all like i'm really like thrown off by how this is this is what the whole marital problems are between Rosalind and Duda and this is where she's been all this time like if that's gonna be the excuse that's a weak that's a weak excuse for me like y'all could have came stronger with something that she did um in order to just be out of the picture and just not pop up on the scene but okay if that's what you want to do okay so you know that's where Rosalind is but Rosalind is trying her hardest to get back into Duda's good graces and she also mentions how is he about to tell Jake you know because Jake had a whole attitude in this episode when Jake confronts Duda about um killing his brother Reg he had a whole attitude with um Duda Jake had a whole attitude with Duda and Duda did the manly thing which was to come and talk to Jake but y'all I think that there's going to be problems y'all listen to me I think there's going to be problems in the relationship still because the way that Duda came and talked to Jake was not an admission that he actually killed his brother Reg he basically told him he knew he was going to get killed and didn't do anything about it but he didn't go into death or maybe he didn't go into death we didn't see him going to death of what happened so i'm thinking that the way that he explained what happened with reg to jake makes it seem like um dude i actually killed his brother so we don't know how jake is going to take that information jake is already acting out in school and stuff he already doesn't like um you know, he acting out with his friends and he really acting out because he doesn't like Gemma because Gemma had spread it all of Kev's business. Y'all, I'm so mad at... Do y'all think that Jake's problems with Gemma stems from Jake's relationship with his mom or lack of? I don't know. Y'all let me know in the comments, okay? But y'all, um, I'm so mad at Gemma in this episode from the way that she just offered her body up to uh, Kevin as a um apology for what she had did and i don't even think that she has to apologize like what she got to apologize this much for like i know it was a sensitive topic for kevin but baby baby girl it is not worth you giving up your goods you know just to apologize and that's the case if he that mad then he needs some time to cool off like he wasn't even that mad you know, he still was peeping her. He was still checking for her. But I'm so glad that Gemma's father walked in while she was getting ready to make a huge mistake. And I didn't even expect this from Kevin, y'all. Like, I would expect um, Jake taking uh, an apology, some some of the cookie for, for an apology. But Kevin, not so much. But y'all, yeah, I couldn't believe it. And I'm so glad that, like I said, her father stepped in. But how do y'all feel, like, on my last recap, I gave Dre the benefit of the doubt. I was like, Dre, if y'all have any doubts about Dre, by this time in the season, I think y'all need to just hang it up because I think she's a good, you know, she's a good person. But y'all, when Nina packed up that dildo, I was like, there go that dildo. I was like, oh, okay, so she don't walk around with the strap on. Okay, all right now. <laughs> y'all yeah, remember I was wondering when, uh, when she, on their anniversary when uh, Dre pulled her pants down and that strap was like, I was like, what? Was she walking around with that on? Is she the type to wear it? But, um, yeah, because you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready, period. But, y'all, um, when she packed up Dre's stuff, I was like, I was on her side because, you know, this is between a mother and her child and nina is in her room y'all gotta understand the power of prayer the power of a black woman when she prays y'all just gotta stay out the way nina is in keisha's room praying she was like you know dre said i'm concerned because you're in her room at hours of time leaving us out here by ourselves nina is in there meditating nina is in there visualizing she's praying she's praying she's manifesting that her daughter will come back alive you know, so th she needed that time. And I think that it was selfish for Dre to want to pack up Keisha's stuff and put it away because she wanted Nina to come back and rejoin the family and be focused on the people that were there, especially after it had only been two months. You know, two months, no bodies found, nothing has been found. Y'all let me know how y'all feel. In my opinion, it was so freaking selfish. But y'all, let me tell you what wasn't selfish. Papa and Maisha. I love uh, Papa and Maisha's 
forming relationship. I love that Papa went and confronted his dad and asked his dad, like, what type of heart do you have, dad? And we about to use this money because we got to help my girl. My girl said her mom was struggling. She can't finish school. My girl about to finish school. Principal said she can't miss no more classes. I love how involved he is with the relationship. I love how Nina is, um, I called that girl Nina, Lena call that lady Nina. Um, I love how Lena has their relationship developing. I love that um, Papa, the pastor, went ahead and made the right choice. Y'all, I was dead when uh, his mother, Maisha's mother answered the door like, yes, I've accepted Jesus Christ as my savior. <laughs> I was cracking up laughing. But then again, I was like, you know what? Um, she, you know, she probably, I'm not going to worry about her relationship with God because her relationship with God is none of my business. What I will say is that I do believe that us as people, as black women in general, um, should really embrace people coming to give us help. I didn't like the part where Papa and um, the pastor went over to help uh, Maisha's mom and she shunned him away and she didn't, I don't need no help. You know, it was that strong black independent woman type of thing. And I really, I despise being that that whole independent woman thing like i'm gonna ask for some help i'm not ashamed to accept some help there was a time in my, and period in my life where i was that person where i didn't need any help and um i have changed my mind on that i have new views on that and i will ask for help when i need it and i will gracefully accept help when it's offered so y'all ladies take note um, you can be an independent woman and still need help. There's no way that you're an independent woman without the help of someone. Let me just tell you that. So there's e no, not even no such thing. But yeah, y'all, I thought that um, that was cool. So uh, I think that was all for this episode, y'all. That's all I'm going to say in this video. If y'all want to talk some more, give me y'all opinions if you, um, or give me your predictions for the next episode. In the next episode, I think we're going to see more. Oh, you know what? Camille. I did not like Camille's... Um, when she was talking to uh, Gemma's father and talking to and trying to get that money that Gemma's father was going to give out, she was very knowledgeable on the topics, you know, or even on Gemma's father's um, <clears throat> whereabouts and how he moves politically and his uh, grandfather's bank and things like that. However, I was just did I say I didn't like it? I was just kind of cracking up. It's not that I didn't like it. And let me let me not say I didn't like it. But I was kind of cracking up that Lena gave herself those lines to say because she wants to put, you know, she wants us to know that she's knowledgeable about her knowledgeable about her history and how she says that y'all trying to swindle her. The guys were trying to swindle her because Jimma's father went ahead and decided to back Duda. And right now, do that. He said that they're splitting the black vote. So I, I was like, wow, you know, the black people are voting for them and they happen to be splitting the black vote. So her father says that he's looking, Jimmy's father said he's looking to back somebody. So that way, um, to help further their campaign, and he chose uh, Duda. So y'all, I'm, I'm saying that Duda will win the, um, he's going to win the election. He'll be the mayor. Um, but you never know. Camille is referencing a lot of things that's going on in Chicago. Right now, Chicago does have a black mayor. So maybe she might swoop in at the end and steal those votes and uh, win the election. So we will see. Y'all let me know your thoughts, your predictions. Um, Y'all know it was quick today, but thanks for hanging with me. It's been real. Y'all be easy. Peace.